right hi guys uh welcome if this is the third time you watch one of these videos because this is only the third video uh today we got an extra guest in the room but they're not going to show their faces um and i'm having coffee because Cape Town is cold um so i wanted to talk about something that made me very heated the other day um i don't believe i've told you this she knows about it um i was on what is it on facebook Yes, and someone that I know really well, who knows, who a lot of people know, who's very well known in the Christian space, um, posted a picture of Rory Sang after her interview about being a virgin and only said she's 33 and she's a virgin and everybody celebrated. My comment was, First and foremost, you know Rory Sang, so have you asked the permission to post a picture to celebrate her virginity? Because if you think about it, her virginity is about her body, right? The interview, if you watch the interview, the interview wasn't even about her virginity so much. It was more about her relationship with God, which I think trumped the entire thing. It was such an amazing interview. Um, and instead of... There's one person who commented really who understood that I was saying about asking women for permission over their bodies. Um, but all the other men were starting to attack me. And I'm just like, yo, that doesn't make any sense. So we're not allowed to have a conversation around how South African men think they have autonomy over our bodies. And this, long story short, there was a back and forth on the Facebook page. I eventually just copped out i said to them you know what we're not allowed to talk about this then we are clearly not as far ahead as we need to be as a society we think we are ahead but men still believe they control our bodies but then it, it the whole time i was thinking about it there were other things that came up for me so i mentioned them ross a lot on this thing because i watch a lot of his videos but a lot of them are so pivotal for the time now and I feel like South Africa is not far ahead yet enough to understand the kind of topics he's talking about because we are narrow-minded we don't grow ourselves we're not emotionally aware all of those things so what had happened was I was thinking about my state of being right where I am now we were talking about this yesterday and how I am actually really proud to be divorced right now where I am and a, a proud Christian divorcee. Because this is a page of a Christian person. And if the men on the Christian page are not far enough to understand that women still don't have autonomy over our bodies and that they feel like they have the need to control it. It's what's being taught in the church still, that a woman's not allowed to say no to sex. It, it brought me full circle to the fact that I am really proud that I am divorced now than I think I would have ever been 10, 15 years ago. Because emotionally... I understand my need for my, my self-value as a woman first, before anything else. But all, I'm just prefacing that because today I actually just really want to talk about why I'm proudly divorced and why I taught myself as a proud Christian divorcee. First and foremost, I'm going to put this out there. I feel like if you are in a relationship and you are not consulting God, that's your first mistake. <laughs> it was a mistake I made. It's a mistake I will never make again. <laughs> Ever. Like, because I was young. I was 21. I had a child. It seemed like the next best thing to do. Um, we were in a Christian marriage, but we never read the Bible once. The only time we actually were involved in our, our faith was when we were going to church and serving in the church. But everybody thought we were this young couple who was Christian. And, oh, we did a whole video, by the way, oh. a business video oh. of couple goals. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> when in reality, we were not doing anything that couple goals needs you to do. Like we were not. And, you know, I take blame for this because... Something I only recently came into awareness about was that I had a choice in the matter. I felt like at the time, like this was the next best thing to do and that I didn't have a choice. So I went ahead with everything that was going on around me. That's not blaming anybody else. I made a choice to get married when 
everything in me didn't want to get married to be very honest there were things that happened right before my marriage that were massive indicators that i should have walked away like for real like i'm not even going to retell those stories but there were things that happened they were like the alarm bell in my head was going off like don't do this because it wasn't safe before i got married and what's funny about it is when one of these instances happened i actually used them as an excuse to try and get my my ex partner to break up with me i was waiting for him to break up with me not thinking in my mind i had a choice in this matter i i put it down to him making the choice and of course he didn't say he said no we'll work it out and you know when he said that everything in me was like ah i needed him to say it's over but that was my my what is it my uh what do we call it my subconscious and my instincts were telling me that this was not the right direction to go in and what do we do as women we go because we love and because we'll make it work and because we will break our backs to make sure that it works even when it's bad so the reason i i, I want to post i say this video the make this video out to be about being a proud christian divorcee is because first and foremost i was born in a christian home but i didn't understand the principles publicly and now that i've been studying the bible so closely do you know that like within the first year of my marriage all the things that i've read especially like i'm i'm reading over proverbs now and i'm reading i've i've read over most of deuteronomy and i'm going to go over it again a lot of the things that i've read were things that were happening in my marriage that i should have walked away from they talk about lies deceit false uh witness all of those things were playing out every single and if i had known my bible <laughs> back then obviously my subconscious would have said girl something's not right red a whole red a whole a whole red blanket store <laughs> to be honest with you they just want selling them to me man but to be honest this is what i feel the problem is with marriage is now w- one thing that jenna jenna mountain said in tim ross's interview was something that blew my mind i had never heard that before right is that um we use marriage as an idol like we idolize marriage like this is something i can't wait to have because it's so beautiful and instagram is just showing us couple girls and all of these amazing things now we are worshiping the idea of marriage without understanding the fundamental things that happen in marriage and if you don't understand that prior girl you going to get caught in hell i promise you <laughs> it will be the kind of hell you wish you had never walked into so th- this is not necessarily just for christian people but i feel like for me as as someone who is now building my relationship with christ and who who really understands what love looks like from a christ perspective god i should have ran a marathon because i idealized what my life could be like being married without actually recognizing that all of the things that were going on was nothing than what i'm experiencing now and it's not like jesus is sitting in front of me and saying oh i love you i know that he's there but my experience with him now is so different from what it was when i was married that is mind blowing to me so some of the stuff we were talking about the other day was about the bride of christ i, I may not talk about that topic yet because uh they might uh, cancel me altogether uh, we will talk about that one cuz that one is very serious but i feel like the one of the major issues for me i feel in 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 faiths in general we, it doesn't matter what faith you're in christianity if you're muslim whatever the case may be is the shame that comes over women when they get divorced and this idea that keeping quiet is the right thing to do Like I can tell you so many people in the last year and I've said I make too much noise. I'm embarrassing them, I'm embarrassing the family, I'm embarrassing all sorts of people because I shouldn't be talking openly about this. When in fact where are those people? Is anybody here? No. I'm a, I'm alone. I'm in fact moving to a homeless shelter by myself. None of the people who told me to keep quiet 
were here even when I kept quiet. And I mentioned this in the first podcast, the first video. But the thing that's interesting to me is that nobody wants to address the issue that if at any point, and this is nobody's fault necessarily, but if anyone at any point had sat me down and asked me simple questions, um, do you feel loved? Do you feel seen? Do you feel heard? Do you feel respected? Do you feel safe? If anybody had just asked me those questions, I would have said no to every one of them. And they would have told me, this is not someone you should get married to. The counseling that we got, Girl, you. <laughs> Whew. It's only after the counselor went through his own things that I realized that was not the counseling we should have gone to. The only conversation we had significantly in that counseling was about sex. And how I am not allowed to deny sex in my marriage. It didn't matter how I felt. It didn't matter what I was going through. It didn't matter whether I was being heard. Oh, and that... Um, there shouldn't be any abuse because I might, this is, this was the exact quote. I might fall off a balcony and die and then there will be serious consequences. That was the gist of my marriage counseling. Yes. <laughs> and you think an alarm would go off in my head being like, um, <laughs> maybe this isn't it. <laughs> like, you know, all the signs, like <laughs> the problem is awareness. We don't teach our young people, especially those who are in their 30s now or not married, what they need to be looking for. And the reason why it's so important to be reading your Bible and not just using it as a table stand, I'm having a deja vu, um, is because it will teach you what to look for in a man. Literally. Songs of Solomon explains how that man worships his wife's body. You don't need porn. You need Songs of Solomon. Y'all, like, let's be real, real, though. Like, I, I, you know what I love about it is the fact that it is just to the core. There were some things that I read this week that I told you, like, a child who is disobedient and they don't want to listen at all. You kill them. <laughs> this is in the Old Testament. I was like, you uh, I would have died a thousand deaths by now because <laughs> I was a naughty child. Hey, anyway, back to what I want to say is the reason I'm proud to be divorced is not for the reason that people think. I think most people have quantified my life down to, um, yeah, I'm in Cape Town now. I must be partying and having fun and all this. When actually, y'all, I spend more time with my Bible than I do with people. That's the truth. And... It's interesting because if I didn't come here, if I didn't get divorced, my relationship with God would still be on the fringes. Because it, it was non-existent. In all of the times that I thought it was going to be existent in my marriage, something would uproot it altogether. And I never understood why. But this is the other thing. What most people don't realize is you have all those signs and things that happen and we don't pay attention to how we're feeling because we're not in touch with ourselves. Just society is telling us we must be married. We have a child. Marriage looks nice. It doesn't matter who you're married to. When, whoo, it matters more than anything else. But what's most important, I feel, and if you know me for a very long time, you know how important purpose is to me, is that you suffocate your purpose. You can get married to someone who can literally cut you off from what it is you're supposed to do in your life. For me, that's a dangerous move. And, you know, I'm so grateful. Like, as I said, yeah, by the grace of God, he hasn't decided to take me out. Because essentially, my purpose is much more important than the marriage I was trying to fulfill when God planned something else for me. A story I've never told openly to people. I've told private. I don't think I've told you this. Uh, when I was 16, I was so broken. I was laying in bed and I cried and I was, I, was, I was so distraught. I said, God, if anything, give me a child because I need someone to love. But I need someone to love me back. That's how I felt. And not long after that, I audibly heard the voice of God call me. <laughs> what did I do? I ran. I was like, no, I'm not doing this with you. I, mm. no, thank you. See you later. And then 20 years later, look where I am now. <laughs> All 20 years. Um, I knew early that there were things that I needed to do. I still haven't come into full, full view. I don't know what God is doing. 
I mean, like I said earlier, I'm going to a homeless shelter and I had to release the tension that came with that. I put that on my Instagram story because I was so stressed about having to go there. But I don't feel like God doesn't put us in places for a reason. And do, do I think I'd, I would have found him like this if I didn't get married? Probably not. So that's probably why he didn't kill me. Um, <laughs> realistically, because the way that he kills people in the Bible, y'all are scary. He doesn't play. <laughs> but um, I think we need to have more conversations. And this is the reason why this YouTube channel, YouTube channel, this channel in the first place is because I feel like we need to come more to the table with our children and our families and have these conversations about what healthy looks like, about what it is we actually want for ourselves. Like... Simple things like if I'm with someone and I'm married to someone, how do I want them to touch me? How do I want them to speak to me? How do I want them to be available to me when I'm going through something? Those are real things. Because now we get one year into a marriage and then things are really hard because this person can't receive you when you're emotional. And with women, you're going to be emotional. They shut down. Those are the kind of things we need to be aware of before we step into relationships and to marriages. And, but also we need to understand that I feel like marriage is important for purpose. I really do. And all the years in my marriage, I thought naively that if I served um, the purpose of the marriage, that my purpose was going to show itself. What in fact ended up happening was my purpose was starting to suffocate every time we were going through. I'm not going to cry because just thinking about this makes me want to cry. Um, we were going through my YouTube videos from Owning This Life the other night. I was a mess. I don't know if you heard me sitting on the floor here crying my eyes out, girl. Because, <clears throat> don't cry. That show meant everything to me. And it meant everything to me because it wasn't about me. I really wanted to get into the mama who cleans the house in the morning after she took the children to school, you know, sitting and having a tea watching Generations in the morning. Does Generations still play on TV? I don't know. I don't watch TV. But <laughs> sitting and drinking a cup of tea watching Generations and I come into a house and help her see that her story or what she's going through or what she's doing in her life could actually push her into her purpose. That was why I created Owning This Life. And that show gave me so much life and so much energy to see the feedback, to, to be able to speak to the amazing people, to meet the most amazing people that I met. I mean, we went through the list. I was like, yeah, I know a lot of people. <laughs> but the conversations were phenomenal. And I knew that was part of my purpose. But the second we got a potential deal, it got shut down. And then COVID happened and then my marriage fell apart. So, well, it, okay, let me not say it fell apart. It, the last bits of it started to come apart because it was already apart at that point. But I, I, I got a highlight of what my life was supposed to look like and what it is I was meant to do on this planet, which is speak. This is what I do. But it broke me because in hindsight, if I had chosen correctly early, we would have taken over the world. My marriage would have been the thing that pushed my purpose forward. And that was the part I was crying about. I probably cried for a good hour and a half after that. <laughs> but this is what I want people to realize. You could potentially choose a partner that suffocates the reason why God created you. And I say this to people all the time. We, take, we, we really take for granted how, how much work it must have been to make us. Science hasn't even figured out how half of our brains work and we think we know better. If God took the time to literally, we were talking about breastfeeding the other day, when, when, when a, a baby suckles on a breast, the, 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 the um, information from the baby's mouth, from the saliva goes to the brain and then the body formulates the, the exact kind of milk that the, their body needs, the baby needs. And if the child is older, it will adjust. Like that's how clever our bodies are. That's how amazing God made us. Then we are thinking we know everything. Ah, that just blows my mind. So I'm just like, we make decisions without God's consent and then expect 
him to tell us what our purpose is when those relationships are the things that are cutting us off from our relationship with God. I had no relationship with God in my marriage because my marriage was my God. My ex-husband was my God. I worshipped the ground that he walked on. He would really beg to differ and I probably shouldn't be saying that because legalities. But my marriage was my... I worshipped my marriage. I literally did. I went through the ends of the earth. I did things I should have never done that I will not talk about publicly. But so there was a time towards the end of my marriage that God was trying to tell me, you do realize that I'm not your God. You have idolized your marriage so much that I'm invisible. I'm only there when you need to cry out for something. That was a slap in the face. And it was through my divorce process that that really came out. Like, you have turned this into your God. I can't be your God if you keep doing this. I can't help you find your purpose. I can't show you who I designed you to be. Because I made you so intricately for a reason. I made you, gave you a big mouth for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> I gave you your attitude and your, your comeback attitude and all that stuff for a reason. Um, so I wanted to, to talk about this more than anything for people who are in struggling marriages. And what's been the saddest part for me is to notice I have so many friends actually who are going through exactly what it is I went through. Um, thank God they are not finding themselves homeless um, because they have family systems who support them. But who are surviving these marriages and with it the entire purpose is gone. Because these marriages force you to focus on the other person as opposed to focus on who you are at all, actually. Um, but also, I'm so proud to be divorced today because I'm finally starting to build the relationship I should have had initially, the relationship I should have learned growing up, the relationship that should have been handed to me on a silver platter coming from church saying, this is what you need to be aiming for. Not, you are the head and not the tail. Like, I love preachers and all, but this, this sermon is getting old for 2023 and it's getting old because we are not teaching people how important the relationship with God is and we tote it as though it's a gift bag. It's not a gift bag. It's hard. It's very hard to have that relationship because you want to do other things. Oh, yeah, I want to do a lot of other things. <laughs> but I have to say no to them. And you've seen my transition. You've seen my transition from other things <laughs> to coming over here now and just finding my sanctity. Um, not all the way there, let's be honest. But um, these are the kind of conversations families need to be having. I mean, this morning in church, they were talking about the nucleus and how important the nucleus in the family is. But funny enough, one of the other sums I listened to earlier was exactly the same message. I was just like, okay, God. Um, but... Families need to be built on not, oh, I'm going to read a scripture for the family every day and then we're going to pray together. We need to be having real conversations. We live in a world where sex literally is one click away on the phone for every child. There's no blocks. If we're not sitting down and having these conversations about what kind of relationships our daughters need to be having and actually modeling those relationships for them, whether we're single, divorced, married, whatever the case may be, and modeling to them the kind of partners they need to be looking for, we are kind of screwing these children's lives up before they walk out of the front door. And then we want to blame them. And when they're going through hell, we just want to pretend, oh, the other light went off, when did it go off? We never put it on. Okay, anyway, <laughs> we were trying to be cinematic. Uh, we failed because we forgot about the light. Anyway, um, <laughs> don't laugh. <laughs> but then we, we, then we reject these children altogether because we feel like they made decisions we didn't want them to make, but we didn't teach them what was right for them. Do you know what I'm saying? I feel like this generation is so naive. Like we think, oh, it will all work out. We just have to pretend that it looks a particular way and then everyone will... No, it doesn't work. We need to actually... Like, I, I talk to my children about sex when I'm with them. Like, I'm like, let's have this conversation. Do you know what sex is? Like, I embarrass my kids and I've warned them. I'm going to embarrass them further. Like, my son, I'm like, sir, we're not having babies. I'm looking at you. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> you're 16 and handsome and the girls anyway but I, we have to be open with our kids we are so naive to think we're gonna t tote around these conversations and then our children end up in really abusive situations 
Do you know what I'm saying? It's so heartbreaking to hear friends message me say, my husband's hitting me and I don't know what to do. I had to talk someone through the other day because she's, she's leaving him. And I said, girl, before you leave him, find a safe place for you and your children and make sure your money is separated from him. You do not want to end up homeless with your kids like I am right now. It is the worst thing that can happen to you. So this is why I say I'm proud and I'm a proud divorced Christian woman and I will tote being divorced if it's suffocating who you're meant to be. And I want to scream it on every mountaintop. I sound very calm right now. But I want to scream it on every mountaintop because I feel like we're not screaming this enough. We're not smacking it in our children's heads, really. I know more people in toxic relationships now than I know people in healthy relationships. And I'm not talking about people who are necessarily in emotionally or physically abusive relationships. I'm talking about relationships that are just dead. They're married to people for years and the relationship is just dead. There's nothing fulfilling in it. They're just together for the sake of being together. And the working part of the relationship or the marriage or whatever doesn't occur. It has occurred to them, but they're not willing to do that work. Marriage is so beautiful, people, if it's done properly. And the only way you can do it properly is if you want to work on your marriage. Toxic relationships, there's usually one person who's not interested in working. And they'll be the same person for as long as you stay married to them. Trust that. Um, but as proud as Rory Sang is about her virginity, I am really proud to be a divorcee because I finally see why God brought me to this planet and it wasn't to be married to whoever I was married to. At the time? Yes, at that time. <laughs> Look, I'm young. I'm not saying I'm looking for a marriage. God knows my heart. That's a conversation between me and him. Um... But I know I will not make a single decision going forward in my life. And that literally is with my situation right now, without his input. Because who the heck am I to think I know better than him? Like, for real, though. In the last six months, I said this in the first video, every need that I've needed has been met. Every need. Even if it was at the bare minimum. I can't say that was me because there were there were literally days when I there was a day when I went to the park and I sat there and I cried and I was like, I'm just gonna die because I don't know what to do. Within twelve hours I was housed for more than ten days and I had food for a couple of days and then work came in. I didn't do that. I didn't call nobody. <laughs> I had nobody to call because I've run out of people I can borrow money from. Uh, <laughs> that's why I'm waiting for my millions so I can pay all those people back because I feel so bad. But there's so many times that that has happened when I've sat like suffocated, like I don't know what was going to happen and then whoo, something shows up. I've had people offer me things out of nowhere. Um, you want to say something? Oh, I thought you were taking a breath. Sorry. Um... But that's why I'm just like, I would be foolish to think I can make any other decisions without God. Because so far, He's made sure to take care of me. Because there is no reasonable explanation for why I'm even still here. There literally is not one. I can't find one no matter how much I seek. And then I'll be stupid enough to like release books like I did this week, which I was not mandated to do by God, which is why nothing happened with it. But I released the book anyway. Because people were asking me, wow, I should stay being in the backpackers for six months. I didn't tell the, all the stories because some of the stories are PG-19, 18. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, uh, backpackers have a lot of sexual exploits. I will not let y'all in on that. Yeah, <laughs> cultures and stuff. <laughs> anyway, um, I know this might not resonate with everyone. And you know what? I really don't. I like I love everybody, but I, I really don't care whether people agree with me or not. I, I would like your opinion and your thoughts on it, because I feel like we need to have a conversation about the fact that God hates divorce. But at the same time, God would prefer you rather to follow your purpose than be married to someone who's going to suffocate the purpose why he made you. That is the real reason why you were here in the first place, not to marry someone who was going to prevent you from doing what it is you want to do. I know too many people who were in bad marriages and then they, they, they themselves, they, who they were as people just vanished. 
others who took too long to leave their partner and then eventually when they did who they were supposed to be and the things that they were meant to do in their life never ended up happening and those were people who were gifted who were anointed who had so much things that were going for them you must realize that if you were in a toxic relationship generally that person knows that there's something on your life and they their whole plan is to make sure that they suffocate it out of you I know people currently who have just decided to be in those relationships anyway, knowing what it's going to do to them mentally, emotionally, and physically. That's a choice that you make. Um, but at the end of the day, I would rather take my really bad situation. And I was telling you this yesterday, Claudia, and I'm looking into camera saying this. I would rather really take my horrible life situation right now Homeless, busted, disgusted, as people would say, and the people who are ashamed for me even saying this because it makes them look some type of way, then be married and not find out who God made me to be. I would really rather take that. Because also, if I'm trying to produce a legacy for my children's sake, I would be the stupidest person on the planet to think that staying in an, a, a really damaging system would teach my children that it was okay for them to branch out and find themselves. They will just repeat the same cycle over. Someone has to break the curse. Someone has to. And although I might be going through my stuff and being like the, 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 the torment right now is a lot. It's actually worse than I've ever been in my life. But I was so invisible and so unloved that I tried to commit suicide a few times. I cannot do that. The amount of love that I feel now with the only three close people in my life, I literally have three close people in my life. And I have no family. Um, I would rather take this. Because I've seen who God is, not through the people who try to represent God to me and failed me or turned their backs on me or left me homeless. Do you know what I'm saying? Someone actually had the nerve to say to me the other day, why don't you go back home? I'm like, where's home? There is nobody for me. And I don't resent that because I know that God separated me for a reason. I'm fully aware of that. I'm soberly aware of that. It hurts. Oh, hell, it hurts. It hurts so much that some days I can't breathe. But it hurts because I've been taught that this is not what people do when they love you. <laughs> Naively, these are people. They are not God. God doesn't do this when you need him. He has literally been the only one on my back so far. Which is great because now going forward... He's literally the only one I'm going to lean on if I need anything. So, yeah, if this message speaks to you, let me know. I'd really just like to know your thoughts. If you have issues or you want to throw the Bible at me or whatever, that's also fine. We can have a conversation about it as long as we have a conversation about purpose versus marriage and whether they should be in competition or be working in collaboration because the collabor the collaborative part is what we need to be asking God about. We collaborate with God to create our lives. We need to be doing that with our partners as well because we become one with them. Like 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 the church is the bride of Christ. We need to steward that the way that Christ would. Same with marriage. We need to steward it in a way, I mean, the Bible describes the stuff like, just read your Bible. Read your Bible and you'll see what I'm saying. That's all. Like, so yeah, uh, I think, I think I'm done. Uh, I will tote this, being a proud Christian divorcee for as long as God decides to keep me single. Um, <laughs> he might decide to keep me single until I'm 70. Um, we're still having a conversation about that. Um, if my purpose is what he wants me to do, it, it doesn't require a partner, we, uh, I, I guess I'll have to accept. But okay. 
Girl, don't embarrass me like that. Nobody knows about Jean-Pierre's between me, you and Espen. <laughs> okay, guys, I'm out. Love you. <laughs>